Hi everyone, my name is Suresh. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm a software senior software architect, and uh, my exposure to Excel, um, actually, I I I was using Lotus prior to Excel uh, in college, and then uh, my exposure to Excel came uh, as part of a mechanical engineering class. So um, uh, you know, doing stuff that I don't remember much now, but. Primarily now, uh, in my role as a senior software architect, I use Excel not much. Uh, I do use it for some programming tasks, but on a personal level, I use Excel a lot uh, to manage my personal finances. Um, I have real estate investments, um, and I continue to make investments in real estate, so I use Excel a lot to determine uh, re you know, return of uh, uh, ROI, uh, you know, all sorts of expenses, uh, obviously for personal uh, uses, I, I use it to um, look at where, where all my expenses and income are coming, uh, going and coming from. So uh, when um, Hub 101 approached on, on covering this particular topic, I figured uh, that would be a good way to kind of introduce Excel to people. Uh, and especially like, uh, you know, initial interest uh, was people that, that have kind of a uh, basic to some level of understanding of Excel. And if there's anyone here who has an advanced level of uh, understanding of Excel, please let me know in chat. Uh, maybe you know, we, can, we can cover some detailed topics here or maybe later at some point. Um, so this is meant to be more of a uh, interactive session um, where I encourage you to play along if you want. Uh, I believe Christian did uh, send out the, the, the data file that I'm planning to use to do this uh, presentation. So there are no slides. Uh, I'm just going to cover a lot of the uh, a lot of the main functions, uh, features of Excel today, and and how you would uh, use those functions to do your, you know, uh, you, you could potentially uh, balance your checkbooks, uh, your accounts, uh, you know, look at your credit card statements and figure out like where your money is going. Uh, you could, if you're a student, you could use it to calculate your uh, grades um, if you want to do that. Uh, I've used Excel and you could do the same thing to manage your, um, uh, if you want to do some kind of an expense share. Uh, so there are several like, you know, practical things. Uh, I, I also use it to like calculate my mortgages. Um, so there's a lot of like practical use cases um, for Excel. So, um, so I'll, I did the data that I'm going to be using. Um, I tried to get it as, as close as possible to a, a, a typical credit card statement. Uh, the data I found online, uh, it's, it, it's from the state of Oklahoma, uh, and it's their uh, expense uh, data. So uh, I'm assuming, uh, you know, they're, 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 they have users that, that they've provided credit cards to, and uh, they're, they've just tracked the, uh, you know, the, uh, the expenses of where they're spending the money. So we'll go through that. We'll look at, like, you know, how you can kind of manipulate data, um, view data, uh, some of the, you know, some of the conditional logics that you can apply, uh, and then uh, ultimately we'll look at, uh, you know, how do you how do you make sense of the data? What are some of the questions that typically people can ask, and how you can use Excel to answer those questions? Okay, so five minutes in, uh, let's start with that. I'll share my screen, and then I'll start from showing, uh, actually opening the uh, the data screen. So initially, I'm going to share my entire screen, and then I'll show you how to, how I typically open the file. And then uh, we'll go from there. And if I hear there's a lot of people on Google, then I'll also show how uh, you could do that in, uh, in Google, at least the beginning of it. The rest of it should be similar to Excel. OK. All right, so here we go. So um, the file that I told you guys about already, the, the P card public, um, you know, it's a small copy. At the end there for uh, that's for 2021 uh, July expenses. Uh, this is again uh, coming from the state of Oklahoma. So typically, if you have Excel installed already, I would just simply right click and say open with. This is this is kind of true if uh, if you have a Windows machine or a Mac machine. I'm on a Mac. Shouldn't really make a difference if you're on a Windows machine or a Linux machine. It kind of opens up the same way. So um, open with Microsoft Excel. Now this, I have to, most people are in Excel. Okay, great. So you can follow along. So you probably should know this already, how to open uh, a CSV file in Excel. So that is not the file. Uh, 
I have had issues with Excel opening this. Let me see. There it is. Okay. So now, does everybody understand like what a CSV file is? It's, it's a comma separated value file. Uh, typically, this this type of file is is what you get from your banks, your financial institutions, when you want to download the data from them, whether it's you know yearly, monthly, weekly, whatever it is. They usually will give you a CSV format of the data that they have. Okay. Now, again, as I said, this this one comes from the public sector. And, um, and from a state of Oklahoma showing what kind of expenses that their users are uh, you know, making on the credit cards issued to them. So now, as you can see, the, the data comes in and it kind of you know, just botched up in there. And, and you, you know, depending on what you're seeing on your uh, screen, most likely, like for instance, there's more data in here than just Oklahoma, right? So, so what you have to typically do is highlight all the rows that have the data and just kind of double click on them to, to, make their, um, to make the columns wide enough so you can see all the data. So I'm gonna stop sharing here for a second and then switch back to just Excel only so you guys can just look at the Excel screen. All right, so now we're back to Excel. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, make this uh, screen size uh, bigger so everybody can see it now. If you can't, please let us know. So the first thing I'd like to like- How did you double click? I went ahead and right clicked and selected to opt it to open the file in Excel. How did you make the columns wider? So let me, let me go ahead and put that back. So now I highlighted all the columns where the data is. And then I double click on the, the middle section where you see, you see where there's those little, um, uh, the line, the column lines are, the colors are. So you just double click that and then that expands all the columns to the width of the data that's in it. Is that good? I've been doing uh, that one by one, Suresh. I didn't know you could highlight them all and do it like that. Yeah, hopefully that's that's the main thing I want to kind of get across it, because what I've seen, like even advanced users that know a lot about Excel don't know these little, little tricks that you can do. Hopefully, you know, I, just following along, you can, you can learn something. Um, could you select it and change it from a general number to the month number on the drop down at the top? General number to the month number, which one? Well, you could always format this to a date. That mm -hmm. will also give you the same thing. Um, well, that's one letter because it's June. Um, yeah, it, it figured out that it's June, but it's one letter. Oops. So let's go back to format cells. I'll go back to put it in number and I'll get you that uh, value real quick here. One second, I just need to look it up. So this is one of those things you could do yourself. Ah, it's times, not plus. That's where I messed up. Okay. So let's go back to the file. Okay, so now you see that it went from um, a number uh, to a June value, okay? So now he here's the other thing. If you want to convert everything else, I don't know if you guys have known, you could, there are a couple of ways to doing that. You could either go ahead and just double click and that just copies all that. I don't know if you noticed where I double clicked, that might've been too fast. I do it at the bottom of that right corner of that cell where there's the little square there, where the plus sign shows up. And you can just double click that and that will go ahead and transform the rest of it, rest of the column, uh, rest yeah. of the rows. Is that formula common? It is common, yes, that is common. That's if you wanna convert uh, a number to month. Okay. So, and, and I'll show you that there's other date fields here that we'll see like how you can format those. Uh, this is just one of those that typically, you know, when you're doing uh, either in your job or in your personal life in, in uh, some of the data that you might get, from uh, your financial institutions or wherever else uh, it might be, you could use the text function to, to convert them. Um, and th these formulas are available online. You could look them up. Um, the goal of this kind of presentation is to kind of show you that there is a way to doing it. And you know, it's easy to just research online uh, if you wanna do it, okay? And then this will uh, just to kind of show you how this changes if this were month seven, uh, that will change to July, 12 will be December. So, you know, it kind of, it will change based on the formula that you put in, okay? 
So that's one thing. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to show. Uh, there's a lot more things, but uh, whenever I'm working with Excel, uh, especially when something that is as long as this, there's about 1,500 records in here. You see how that top header that explained what each columns are um, disappears? Okay. You could lock those uh, by going into, sorry, I got this thing in the way. Uh, it is under view. Yes, it's under view. This should this should be similar to your Excel as well, regardless of the version that you have. And then you freeze the top row. Okay. When I clicked on that soft, uh, that freeze the top row, it freezes it. So now your data scrolls underneath it, and your column is always visible. Column headers. Okay. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know, missing out. Like if, if this was, if this scrolled up uh, along with your scroll, then you wouldn't know what these fields could mean, right? So now that you could freeze it, it stays there, okay? Um, and then uh, if, if you want to, uh, for instance, know um, based on the last name, you want to sort this data by last name, there's sorting features in Excel under home, the home ribbon, oops. And there it is right there. I can sort either by A to Z. So now I want you to note this expand selection. This is pretty important. If you don't select this, what, what this expand selection means is that all these, uh, the, the data, each cell is tied, right? In, in one row. It's not going to be um, independent by themselves. So the expand selection, that's what it's asking you. Excel is coming and asking you, hey, do you want to just uh, sort the column by itself? Or do you want to make sure that you sort everything else that's associated with that particular row? So I've almost never had a, a, a practical use case where I've done one by itself. So I've always left uh, it in uh, an expand selection. So it's going to go ahead and sort and everything else will sort with it. So now, you know, we, we're sorting by Aaron D and then, you know, every, everything else, every other data that's associated with Aaron also got sorted. Could you show us again how you sorted that from the home tab one more time? Okay, I'll, I'll go. I'll do it again. Well, I'll, let's let's now do this uh, in reverse. Okay, so under the home tab, the uh, the, the sorting is under A to oh, Z. Oh, there it is. Filter. Okay, it's right there. I've actually not done it from data. Let me see. <laughs> data sort. Do do same thing. From... Look to your right. Oh, you your do pointer. it. Yeah, you do it right there. Okay, okay, it's the same thing. That's one thing that you you find out about generally in in Microsoft products and uh, generally about like most of the uh, softwares out there. Uh, that are that are meant for this kind of usage. There, there's probably three or four different ways that you could do the same thing. Okay, so um, yeah, I've I've pretty much done it this way. It's it's right up front on the first uh, home ribbon, so I can sort it back by Z to A, same thing, and then you sort by Z. Okay, and then uh, let's do now uh, filtering. So filtering, uh, I'm I'm just going to sort it back by. Um, Uh, by uh, alphabetical order. Uh, the filtering uh, is, is, is a pretty powerful feature um, with, with Excel. It, for me, I, I use it a lot to, especially with, when I'm analyzing my financials, um, like say a credit card bill, uh, I'm always interested in, in knowing uh, from the description, I, you know, credit card bills usually don't categorize anything. And, uh, you know, I'd like to be able to categorize as like, okay, where am I spending this money? Is it, is it going in entertainment? Is it going in dining? Is it going in uh, some kind of a household type of purchases, uh, you know, et cetera. So um, you could always apply filters to then search for that information. And then I've used it personally uh, to group the data, but there are many different uses for this. So in this case, uh, let's, for instance, you, know, you can sort by every column. Uh, there's, it's not limited to uh, any column. So here is where the sort is. I'm sorry, sort and filter. Uh, so did, it, did everybody see that? I went to the same uh, button there and then click on filter and you see this little arrow pop up on the column header. So now if I want to see, for instance, um, I just want to see like all the different universities that are spending money right? All the users from different universities. So in this, 
I would select that drop down and then uh, leave this alone. I, I would simply go in here and then actually search for it. So I could do university here. I'm going to type it in. Spell correctly. And I get there are three universities. Okay. And they're all here. Okay, so the, 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 that filter allowed me to filter that data by people that are spending from the universities. Okay, so now I could change that filter to anything that I, anything else that I want. Uh, I can go, oh, you do have to redo uh, it before you can go um, filter again, uh, or, or maybe not, let me check. So if I say college instead of a university, it does filter back to, to college. There's a lot uh, fewer college here. So you have uh, filtering capabilities. Now I could apply that to any different columns out there. Now there are different ways to filtering. So I showed you just a general freeform search. You could also do it by a, you know, a certain uh, type. Like you just want to know what ends with the word Oklahoma, for instance. Okay, so I could say ends with, and then I will type in Oklahoma there. And it's here, but it's not showing up in my Excel. Oh, you know what might be the reason? Uh, go back. Oh, maybe it was showing up. It just went up. Hold on. So there it is. So now you have everything that ends with Oklahoma. Okay. So now you could do this with, uh, you know, you, you see there are multiple options here. There's one that's equal to, there's does not equal to, you can, you can exclude things. Uh, you can include some things that begin with a certain letter, a word or letter. Uh, you can do that with does not begin with, does not end with. Uh, you can do something that contains, the first search that we did is, is equivalent to the contains. So anything that had the word in uh, Oklahoma in it would have been brought back, or rather, I think we searched on university. So we searched on university. So anything that's that's in you know that has the word university in it will come back. It could be in the middle, in, in the left, right. It doesn't matter. It begins with, ends with. It doesn't matter. Okay. So if you if you're happy with your filter and, and or you're unhappy with your filter and you want to clear it out, you have the same option here. Go back to that button and then clear it out. Okay. So that's uh, one way to um, or uh, several ways that you can apply filtering. The next one I'll show you quickly. Uh, I've got to move here. Got a lot to cover. So this uh, date formatting. Uh, we we I showed you how to format um, a number to a month. Uh, there are other for, uh, ways that you can format dates. Uh, this one happens to be in a in a date month uh, dash. I'm sorry, and and year. And the way that you can change that format and you can see what are the different formats that are out there by going to format cells. And I did this by right clicking. Okay, right click on the column, select format cells, select date from the category. And then here are all the different options that you have in how you can display the date. You could actually make your own format too, but I'm not gonna cover that here. It becomes a little, you know, uh, it's similar to how we did the month in the, in the first uh, sample I showed you. You also have a way to uh, uh, customize the way that you uh, show the date. But for most practical use cases, the way that you wanna format the date, it's gonna be here. And most of the time people will select this, right? It was already actually selected by, you know, by default. And that changes it. Okay, this is how people are mostly used to seeing the dates here. So that's how uh, most people will do it. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and change this too. Uh, if you wanna see a different format, uh, if you want to actually see the day, that, that gives you the day. Okay. Now, um, we talked about grouping before. I showed you uh, filtering and how I used to do grouping. Uh, what I mean by that is, for instance, uh, let's, let's think of a use case here. Um, so we, we got all these purchases being done by, uh, you know, the state employees. I want to see like what they're uh, like, how much is being spent on, or how many transactions were done on, done online. Uh, maybe the state says that 
you know, buying online purchases is cheaper than people driving out, right? Maybe they want to know how, mu how much people are spending online, okay? So in order to do that, um, I do see things like Amazon here, right? Uh, typically, typically, uh, an internet purchase would be something, you know, something that has the word .com in it. So now, if I want to filter and, and, and get that, uh, I would just simply go in based on what I showed you before, and then just go .com here, and that should bring back everything that, you know, that has the word, uh, or rather that's, that's an internet uh, merchant, okay? So now, I, since I want to categorize this, uh, I do want to add another column so I can capture this data in a more permanent way. What I mean by that is at a later point, I'm going to be running analysis on this to, to find out how much people are spending on this uh, on the internet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly uh, make a column that will give me a flag that shows me that these are internet purchases. Okay. So I'm just going to make a column that's called um, is online purchase. So I'm just going to go ahead and say yes here, uh, like that. And then I'll just copy that through. Again, I did that by um, focusing on the lower right-hand corner and then just double-clicking. That transfers all the data over, okay, to the next to the, uh, to the to the rest of the rows. Now I can filter this. I have to first remove this filter to get it back to the original set. Now I can filter this and find out what uh, purchases were made that were not online, right? So I'd simply just uncheck yes, and I would get the rest of them. Okay. So here I can go ahead and, and say no, just so that I have it, um, I have it recorded. Sometimes this doesn't work. So uh, if, if it doesn't copy all the way through, you could always copy that by, and I did, uh, you could do copy, right click and copy, and then select the cell that you want, and then do shift, you can go all the way down to, to the bottom of the list, went too far, and then shift, click on that last cell, and then I can do right click and paste. So that should go ahead and uh, uh, set the values to no for all of them, okay? So now I'll go ahead and uh, remove this filter as well. And just want to pause real quick there and ask if there's any questions that I go too fast. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Can you group by date with subtotals by group? Yeah, I'm going to show that as part of the uh, the pivot tables that, that is coming up. Uh, yeah, we're, we're doing okay on time. So I will, I will be able to get to that and I'll show you that. Okay. Awesome. So now um, the way I did this is, is, kind of a lazy way of doing it. Um, I, I went ahead and, and, and filtered for things uh, that were internet-based purchases and then I marked them. Uh, you know, I, I added a, a, another text in another column to help me kind of group them if, that, if I want, if I need it. And the, the reason I say that's a little lazy is because if say, for instance, I find out that uh, let's go find like Amazon, for instance, right? That wasn't really made on Amazon. It was a, it was a mistake. Okay, it was, it was actually bought, uh, actually Amazon probably a bad example, but let's think of it like Best Buy, right? You could either Best Buy, uh, you could buy stuff from bestbuy.com or you can buy it from the store. So let's say you find out that later that you bought it from the store and that purchase didn't happen actually online. So if I were to go in and remove that .com, it still says it's yes, right? Maybe I went to Amazon Fresh and bought it, right? It still says yes. What you want really is you, you want that information to dynamically change. Okay. So, and the way to do that is to use uh, formulas. So I'm going to go ahead and just introduce another column here. Uh, first, before I do that, let me put this back. I don't know if, you, if, uh, if, um, if you're all familiar with formulas, but here's, here's an alternate. So I'm just going to say alt is online purchase. I'm just going to say, okay. So for this, uh, so 
if you're not used to using formulas in Excel, the way to start a formula and inform the Excel cell that, that you're putting something that's going to be dynamic is you have to start with the equals, the equal sign up here. All right. Or you could do it here too, but I usually will do it from here. So now what we want to do is it's the same thing. You want to go in there and find ones that have .com in them, in, in the word. So um, I could use something like uh, find, which is another function. And if you want to know more about functions, uh, I will share a link to the Excel reference uh, from Microsoft that gives you a list of all the different functions that they have. Most of them you're never going to use, uh, but there are really good ones in there that you probably always use. Okay, so you could go ahead and click on this FX here. That's also means insert your function. That it, that's what it says right there. And then I could find that find function because I want to be able to find merchants that have .com word in it, right? As soon as I go there and find it, Excel gives you a, a description of what that uh, uh, function is supposed to do. So it returns a starting position of one string within the other. Basically, I'm just looking for the word uh, .com in it. And there are other functions to do this too. I'm just going to show you find, okay? So I choose find. And here it's going to tell you, okay, what do I want in it? Like what, what text do I want to find? I want to find .com, okay? Within which text? Now, again, this is where I have to use a reference. I'm going to reference the, the cell J2, okay? And then start number is like, okay, wh where do you want to start it? Now, Excel is saying, okay, I found the text here. Which uh, letter do you want me to start on? Typically, you leave this in, on, on one because you want to start from the leftmost and then search through, okay? Now, you're going to see something here. This gives you uh, this, this weird thing, uh, hash value exclamation mark. What that is telling you is that it didn't find it. But you have to be able to like, make sense of that, right? Now, I can't evaluate that, it's, it's, uh, or uh, sort of I could. But I can't use that to, um, you know, I'm, I, I want to be able to say yes or no. I can't see what the value, right? If I just copy all this, you're going to get a bunch of values. Uh, I don't, this, this, this is showing me the first um, occurrence of the, of the word dot .com, uh, which would be, you know, if you count the uh, letters from Amazon, it'll be the seventh position. But anyway, so going back here, you, we need to be able to handle this. Um, so for that, uh, you know, there's another function. So here I'm going to be doing nesting. This is going to get a little advanced. Uh, I'm going to nest here, which should be if error. That's actually considered an error. What do you mean by nest? So I'm, I'm putting a function inside of a function. Got it. That's what we call nesting in programming. So, um, so if, if it's error, it's going to say, arguments. So value if error is it's not, right? So now I have, you know, my, uh, my condition for whether uh, the, the text in the J column uh, contains the dot com. So this can help me figure out whether um, it has uh, it has dot com in it. Now I'm still not done yet because I need to see yeses for these. Right, I need to actually see a yes when it, when there is a dot com in it. So I'm going to make one more adjustment. So instead of looking for that, oops, if I'm going to nest one more time, if if error is, um, let me try this here. If it's no, then. Or yes, and I'll explain. We just get that formula there. Okay. We just test it real quick. There it is. It's yes. So let me explain this formula real quick. So it's again. I sorry if I got a little too advanced here. There is three nesting happening here. Three functions that I've done. What this, this if and if error really conditions, they're not really functions. The find is the function. So first I'm asking, hey, can you give me, the, uh, can you check if this particular column, a text has .com in it? If it does, it's just gonna return a value to me. If it doesn't, it returns an error. So I look for that error. 
and say, okay, can you tell me if, if there is none, are you going to give me an error? And if it does, then I know the .com is not in there. And then finally, I have an if condition outside of all that. And then that, you know, I use to evaluate, does it actually have the yes, uh, the .com in there? If it does, then, then, um, then yes. And if, if, it, if it's not in there, then a no. It could be a little confusing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll try to, if, if we have time, I'll try to show you a more simpler example of the if condition. Otherwise, um, that's, that's the function. Yeah, in fact, uh, we should be doing that now because a lot of this, because we open this as a comma separated value file and the functions and all the manipulations that we do, it usually, uh, if you want to keep the functions as themselves, you can't, uh, you can't keep them as a CSV file. You have to save them as an Excel document. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and then just um, pass this function along. Okay. So now we should be able to see the same thing. Okay, now using functions is a little better because now if I remove this .com, and because you know, we made a mistake, that changes to no. So more than actually looking and, and really drilling down into the function and then you know, analyzing what I did, the point that I wanna stress here is the reason for using functions versus like doing some uh, data manipulation to, to set certain flags. You want to be able to use things that are dynamic so they adjust based on the data. Okay, in, in real life, especially if, if you're working and they're asking you to, they're giving you data sets uh, from some you know, database, it, you, most more than likely that data is gonna constantly change and, and you cannot use um, you know, a, a permanent flags like the way I did on column L you know, to do your analysis. It, it's gonna make, make it a lot more difficult. Instead, if you use formulas and dynamically change and they can change based on the data that's changing underneath it, it makes it a lot, lot easier to work with. Okay, it's a lot, lot more flexible. All right, and then I already showed you how to look up other functions. Um, they're, they're here again. I'll go ahead and clear that out. Uh, you'll see there's, there, there are functions like uh, find VLOOKUP. We'll see if we have time for that. That's uh, one of the more advanced functions that Excel has. Uh, there's roundups, sum, counts, average. So let me, let me kind of quickly go through some of the other ways you can do sum, count, average um, here. So, so let's, let's say here we have amount, right? Uh, first of all, I'd like to format that into an actual dollar. So, so now they're like, they look like dollars. So if you try to see if I can move this up and I'm gonna clear out the filters. So now we have all the data, right? So here's, here's a couple of things. Uh, Excel kind of gives you right off the bat. So if I highlight that column, and I just I want you guys to see how I did this, just click on the column, I right there, where you see my arrow, you should see the, the average, the count, and the sum at the bottom right here. Oops, do you guys see that? Stop it. Okay. It it's, averages that whole column and that right there. Yeah, it, it does that. So you don't you don't really oh, need to use a formula to do that. Um, it will give it to you right there if you want to know real quick. Now that should change if I start applying filters. Let's let's go ahead and try. So if I just want to see internet purchases, so they spent eighteen thousand on their seventy two. Okay, 72 transactions were made online and they spent 18,000 on it. And the average of each spend was uh, uh, 253.55. Okay. Um, let's back up. Can you hover over to averages and show us how to find it again? Just highlight the column and look at the bottom and you will get the average count and the sum. One, yeah, one more thing that I think you guys will find useful. So I, I just want to um, uh, say that you see these with parentheses in there. Probably, you know, people with financials know that that's a that's a, a credit. That's not a debit. So that's like a refund, right? So I, I just want to see those refunds uh, to make sure that I'm getting money back. Um, but you know, I don't I don't want to kind of use the parentheses to to represent that. So I want to use maybe colors to do that. So I could apply a conditional formatting to that. Uh, and, and you see that right there. And I can say. Um, 
So here's something, of, here's yes, something weird, Suresh. Mm -hmm. um, when you click conditional formatting like that, and I don't know if it's the same for everyone, but I can't see the pop-up that comes up. Oh, because it's it's not a full screen share. Okay, I'm gonna sw uh, switch back to full screen share then. Okay. When you highlight the whole cell like that and it gives you the count at the bottom, mm -hmm. does that count include the top row with the header? So that was 72 online purchases from Amazon. Did that- No, it ignores that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Excel is pretty smart in, um, and I, I didn't actually demo some of that stuff, but I'll show you guys, uh, you know, things like when we, when I just, uh, where is it? Uh, this formula right here, right? We, we did it, we did one formula and I just kind of double clicked on that little bottom uh, right, right hand corner. And then it just copied everything. But you have to notice in the formula that it actually adapts to the next cell, right? Remember initially when I set up the formula, I was referring to J2. So when I copied that over to K2, K3, it automatically takes J3. So Excel is very good in, in, in guessing and, and, and figuring out what you're trying to do. And then it, it adapts uh, very, very cleverly. Okay, so uh, all right, so now I'm going, so in that sense, yes, it, it is clever enough to know that, that you've got a header row. Okay, so now uh, I wanted to show you a conditional format. Now you should be able to see that screen, do you? I can now see the pop-up. You can see the pop-up, right? So highlight yeah. rules. So here, here's where I could say, okay, I want to know all the credits, right? That's money coming back to the to the government. So I'll just say less than. Uh, I'll, we'll say less than or equal to. Uh, less than or equal to zero. And uh, what kind of color I want? Since it's money back, I want green. So that now that highlights all the ones that were credited back or the refunds, okay? Now, you could also filter by the colors too. You could say, I just wanna see the green ones. So I, I, I click on filter again. Let me just go back and uh, show it again. Filter, and here I have an option for by color. I'm sorry, filter by color right here. That's by sort, by color here. And I can select now by cell color, light green, and then that only filters down to this. So now if I wanna go see, well, how much money did I get back? Just click on the, the column and you'll get the, the there was $4,000 worth of refunds. Oops. You see it at the bottom there? There were 38 mm -hmm. transactions yeah. that were refunded. Okay. So moving along and, and uh, this is where I'm gonna go into, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear the filters. Uh, we'll go into pivot tables now. Th this is where things start to make sense. Uh, you're really at this point. I, I tell people that I, you know, talk about Excel with and, and teach uh, some of the new stuff to. Um, it, it really comes down to the type of questions you want to ask. Um, you know, it could come from you know your personal situations or, or uh, you know, you're doing some analysis for your work. Uh, so we'll we'll try to kind of ask some common questions, uh, some simple questions. Uh, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. So first. Um, to insert a pivot table, you go to the insert tab up there, and then there it is right there, pivot table. You don't have to, you shouldn't have to do anything here. I've seen people have to select everything. You shouldn't have to, Excel is smart enough to figure out that you want to analyze the whole set. Uh, I haven't had a need ever to analyze a specific data set except for the whole, whole, um, uh, whole set that's in the sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna click on pivot table. And you can tell that, but there's like a little faint dotted line that's animating. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I know it looks like it's ending here, but it's not. It's, uh, oh, did, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it is It is ending there. It's, it's to the bottom of the screen. And you can also see how far it's going. It's picking from this tab, P card public, that, that number. And then it's going from dollar A1, dollar one to dollar P to, uh, that should be 15 something. Oops, I, I can't go to the right but it goes all the way to the, uh, to the end there. I'm gonna redo that again. So now I'm gonna ask for it to create the pivot table in a new worksheet. So it's just gonna add a worksheet at the bottom here and then put it in a new worksheet. So now uh, let's see, if you wanna create a report to show that, okay, how many are internet purchases versus how many are not, right? I could do that now and, and actually show it in one, uh, one sheet categorized. Okay, 
and the column that we uh, we we used is um, alternate way of is online purchase. So I'll bring that in. No or yes, and how much was spent on it? And I, oh, by the way, I, I brought that into the rows. Okay, so that's the row labels, and then the amount, and I'll bring that into the values section here because I want to see how much was spent in each. Okay, so now you can see that the internet purchases that were made, uh, there were $18,000 worth. I don't know if you guys remember that I, you know, it was the same value that we saw when we highlighted that column after we had filtered it down to internet purchases. And then the rest was 645,000, okay? The same rules apply here. If you wanna, for the sake of reports, you could, you could apply data formatting here. I wanna convert that to a dollar uh, so it looks nice. Um, now, now you got the dollar symbol there and then the, um, the amounts, okay? So now what are the ways can I filter this? Um, for instance, uh, I wanna know, it, when I started the presentation, we, we filtered based on university and colleges, okay? Now, what if I wanna see how much my educational institutions are, uh, are spending, okay? So I could bring in, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out. Okay, I could bring in the agency name. I'm just gonna start with this and then show you how to filter down, okay? And then I'm gonna bring the amount back in. I should probably left it there. We'll go ahead, uh, I think the formatting might change. So now if I wanna filter down to like say universities, I'll, I can go ahead and add that to the filters here. Now, I have seen this do this, so that it doesn't apply, oh, sorry, hold on. Actually, I could just do it right here. I don't need to bring it there. I can just do it right here. not changing sort by agency name. Oh. We'll do hmm, less than greater than oh contains. Yeah, that's where my mistake was. No, that's still not working. Uh, ends with. It's bringing it up here, but it, for some reason, it's not filtering in my uh, from my sheet. So. You, you, there's, again, as I said, there's multiple ways of doing this. Uh, and the other way that you could potentially do this is simply do it the way that I showed you before. And you could go here um, and then just simply filter down to universities, similar to how we did this here. I could say is uh, education, for instance. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do it the dumb way here. And I'll just filter it down by university. So I'm just gonna go quick here, uh, education, educational. And then I'm going to also do that to colleges. Really having a hard time spelling today. Okay. Same thing, same thing here. Oh. 
Uh, having a hard time grabbing that one. Okay, I'm just gonna copy it then and paste it. Oh, not a whole lot. Okay. And then uh, we'll go ahead and clear the filter out so I can mark the rest of them as not educational. So we can look at this data there. Go back here. Get out. Uh, let's say not educational. It's doing that again. Okay. Then I'm going to set that. Should copy over soon. There it is. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this as a, an Excel file, real quick. Here I should have done that earlier, but okay. So now we'll go back to the pivot table. Uh, I might have to redo this, but let's see if it brings if I can refresh and it brings it in. Okay, it did. So now I will try to apply the filter is education. And then here, I want to remove the not educational. Now you see, although I don't know why the alcohol thing. Oh, did, I, did we select not educational? Hmm, OK. So there's probably a reason why, I don't know why the, the alcohol beverage law enforcement was there, but something matched there. Department of Corrections, because none of those are educational. Did I mess up the? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why that that it's grouping that way. Uh, we did go do it by agency name. So, so let's see. It's because you have eyes on you. <laughs> yeah, the demos are always interesting. No, I. I I, I practiced this. This was working. <laughs> you mentioned that you might have to redo it. Do you think that's why? Um, yeah, let's just do that. Let's just uh, rule that out in case that's the problem. Okay. Go back to insert again, pivot table, new worksheet. So let's go agency name here. Then amount. Filter. There it is. Oh, because I left the blanks. There must have been some blanks in there. That's why. I, I don't know if, if you guys, did you guys see what, what happened there? Okay. So I did apply the filter. There must have been some blanks that didn't have anything in them. Uh, it, it probably had something to do with, let's go check what happened here. Um, so we had this education column that I filled, right? Yeah, you see all these blank ones? That's what was causing the problem. So I have to choose the blank ones and then remove them. Or, or mark them as not educational. Okay. Now I'll paste that in and that should do it. So now the good thing is, it's dynamic. As, as soon as I refresh this here, like you wouldn't see that anymore. Actually, the, it's still there. Uh, let's see if there's anything that's left over. Yeah, but there isn't, there isn't anything left over. Everything got changed to either educational or not educational. So this is another way that you can, um, you can group data. So now there are different things here. Can I do it by date, month? Uh, you know, wh which day did they spend the most money, right? So you could uh, bring in, instead of agency name, I just want to see, like, when did they actually spend the most, right? So I brought in, I, I removed the agency name, and I brought in the posted date of the transaction. So that tells me, okay, which, which days, did they, you know, how much did they spend by date? Now, if I want to see which date that they spend the most, you could apply sorting here. It's a little different. The sorting in the pivot tables, in this Excel sheet here in this worksheet, I showed you sorting by uh, pointing at the column, right? You highlighted the column and then I applied the sort. In pivot table, it works a little differently. I can't highlight the column and do the sorting. I have to highlight the data specifically and then do the sorting. So I select from the top 
hold down the shift key and then select the bottom uh, row. Now I can sort. So now it's sorted by the highest amount. So which day people spent the most at the beginning of the month. So some, some ways that you can apply sorting. Now we are about an hour close. Um, I don't know how everybody's time is gonna be, but uh, there are other things that I wanna show, but I, I'm, you know, I, I wanna set up some time for questions so far. Do you guys want me to do any kind of other analysis, any other function that you, you've seen in the past or what we saw today that, that you're wondering like how to, how to do this? How do you get back the pivot table fields that just disappeared? Oh, this, it, it went like this, right? That's what you're talking about. It disappeared. Yeah, it disappeared because I'm not focused in on the pivot table. To, to get it back, you just focus in on the pivot table. You just click on any one of the cells, it'll come back. How, how did you get that up there? How do, how do I get this here? It's automatic. Uh, so I'll show you another uh, instance. So we'll just go back and restart this. I'll, I'll clear out the filters. Okay. So again, go to insert pivot table, leave all the defaults by itself. I, I always like mine to be in a new worksheet. Don't put it on the existing worksheet. That makes it very difficult to see. Go to a new worksheet and then click OK. It, it's automatic at this point. Now, right. here's where you might go bad, right? You accidentally click on one of these cells. It might go away, and it does. Now you're going to be like, oh, my God, what, what happened? It went away. All you have to do is simply just click back in here. It comes back. You know, you're so used to it sometimes until I see these questions. And, you know, I didn't realize what I was doing at that time. But I'll tell you, when I had that, I had to like, I used to literally drop the sheet, come back and do it again before I figured out, oh, all I had to do was uh, click into the uh, click into the pivot table and that, that'll give me the fields. Okay, so so here, here are the things that I want to show. If, if anybody wants to see this, um, just let me know. There, there were things like, you know, you know how you have the last name and first name? I wanted to show another example where um, instead of looking for information, maybe we want to consolidate information in an Excel sheet. Okay, do, do people know how to do that? So like, for instance, people might say, I want to just see full name. No, I've had okay. to Google this 7 million times because every time I forget how to do this. Yeah, it's, I, there's two ways to doing this. Uh, there's a concatenate function that you could use. I always do it this way. This is a little bit simpler for me but it does require some kind of logical operation uh, operator. So people might be a little scared of this, but it's, it's very easy to do. The way to like combine things in Excel is just to put the ampersand. So I want to combine values from cell F2 and cell F, I'm sorry, G3. That's where the first name is. Okay. So I got Aaron B, right? I think it was G2. Yeah. I'm sorry, did I, G G2, I should have put G2, sorry. Yes, thanks for catching that. I'm just gonna recopy that. So you got, so now the, the problem here is it's, it's bunched up together. You, you, want it, you want it to be readable. So anybody wanna take a guess how to, how to do that? It, it's the same way. Add a space. So how do you put a space in? You just put no a double quote space, mm -hmm. double quote, and then add that. Now you got a space. Okay. There may be instances where you have to split the data from the columns. Uh, one of the things I had wanted to show was, uh, but the thing was, it, it wasn't happening for me, but oftentimes, like for instance, uh, if all you had was like, um, like two words, for instance, or Oklahoma State University like this, and you want them in separate columns, you could just highlight that and then say, text to columns under data. Tab. So if I do this, I, I, unfortunately, I can't do it. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll do it from a different sheet. So I'll put it here. I want to do text to columns. So it'll, it'll come and ask, okay, what, how do you want me to, how, how, are the, how are the values separated? I'm just going to say it's separated by uh, a space. So you see, it's already showing me a preview of the separation. So I can just finish at this point. So, okay, so you're asking, so, so what's the practical purpose of that? Sometimes when you get CSV data, you might not get it in a file. Sometimes it just will show it to you in a web screen or something. And if you want to take it from there to Excel, oftentimes Excel is not smart enough at that point to split it 
you know, automatically into columns for you. So if you ever, ever find yourself in that situation, just paste it into one column and then highlight that column and then just go text to columns. Okay. Um, what else uh, did I have? Um, let's go back to the sheet. Um, so uh, I wanted to show roundups. Um, th there's some, one mathematical calculation I did want to show. Um, like, for instance, uh, you, you might be asked, uh, you know, like in a, in a, again, in a work situation or even like, coloring here. To remove the color, you just go home. And in the fill, there's this is the fill thing here. Let's just say no fill. What is it? Is it taking a that's why it's not adapting? Okay, it's changing. I think it's somehow taking your conditional formatting from J. Yeah, but I didn't apply any. Uh, maybe here you mean? Mm -hmm. let's, let's clear that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I just removed the condition. You're right. It, it was applying that because it, we, we had set up the conditional um, uh, formatting based on the cell value being below uh, zero. So obviously these are below zero, so you get it. So let's say you want to calculate the tax, right? Uh, what How much payment was uh, paid in taxes? And I, I just looked it up. Oklahoma City or state has an average tax of about six point five percent. So, um, so you could you could add a column called taxes paid here, and uh, again go back to the formula. So um, let me just quickly check my formula here before I write it. Did I not save it? Oh, there it is. So it's the amount divided by the, um, the tax value. Okay, so let's go back to the sheet. So it's the amount, which is in J2, divided by uh, the, you know, the 100% times the tax, which I thought was 0 0.065. 0 0.065 is the tax. Uh, Uh, well, minus that amount. So, so we get J2 minus, oh, what happened? J2 minus that. So uh, at six six and a half percent, your tax you paid on that purchase was 1.22. And I just copied that same formula throughout. So now I know how much taxes I paid. Uh, if I want to know total, just highlight the, the column. And at the bottom there, it shows that you paid $40,000 in taxes. Average of 26, almost $27 per purchase. Okay, so some of that. And then uh, um, how many people are still around? Eight. Does anybody want to see the view lookup? That's a little different. Sure. I hear a lot about this in memes. Uh, <laughs> v lookups is, is, is a bit of an advanced concept um, that you typically won't need it for your like regular day-to-day -day use. Uh, the reason why VLOOKUP becomes um, a good way of doing this or, or useful tool uh, is if you have uh, data that's, that's separated out, like that have certain relationship with them, but they're, they're, they're uh, given to you in separate sheets. So they might be giving you data from, you know, you get, you get the credit card data, for instance, right? Uh, and the, the case here would be, like, you know that in a state, there's no general state sales tax. It's all by county, okay? So if you want to go by county, they might just tell you, oh, you know what? Here's a, here's a list of um, the tax rates based on a county. And then they'll just give you the county name here. So you have to then map the tax rates from the uh, the lookup table that they give you to the transactions that are happening in the uh, that are that are displayed here. So that's where uh, something like a VLOOKUP table would, would come in handy. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and open the file that I already did this on, so um, to, to kind of save time. So I'll just open this. So what I did is um, I, I, I just randomly went and identified and associated each record to a, a, a two counties in, in Oklahoma, just, just for, the, for the sake of showing um, how this works. And then I, instead of putting it on a different sheet, again, that's a little bit complex, but you could do this uh, in, in the same sheet. You don't have to do it on a different sheet. So I just copied the data here for the different counties. And then for the sake of just doing this uh, exercise, I just assigned two counties to the entire transaction list, the Dewey County and the Aloka County. So now here, I pulled that information from um, right here. So I used the VLOOKUP to pull that data from this area here. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this so everybody can see. Okay. So basically what we're trying to do is, okay, so here's a transaction that happened. And this particular user was, was purchasing this from Dewey County. And the Dewey County, the tax is 0.95%. Okay. Um, in, uh, in the other one that I, that I used was Atoka County. Atoka County has 1.025%. Okay. Um, I know that counts, uh, kind of sounds too low, but you know, it, it, it works for the example that I'm showing here. So the way you do the V lookup is let's go to the, um, where is that column right here? So you set up the function VLOOKUP. You specify which column you want to match. You want to match that J2. Uh, I'm sorry, not J2. Where is the column? I2, the column name. And match it to this lookup reference right here. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can go ahead and uh, hide these columns. Just, just kind of make this easier to see. Okay, so here's the column. So if you look up, uh, and I'm just going to do a new one. So I'm going to say V look up. First is lookup value. Lookup value is in this column here, which I can't see now. Uh, it was a J or I rather, I three. Okay, the table array. I have to say now this is another trick that you have to know. Uh, I can't just say go from A2 to, I'm sorry, to uh, C5. I can't say that because Excel would, would, uh, would kind of predict if you want to copy that value down, that your lookup values are also moving down with you. You don't want to do that, right? Your lookup value stays static. It has to stay in that place. And uh, there was another example where we saw that they do the locking by just putting the, the dollar sign. That's how Excel knows just to hold that location. Okay. And then the column index that you want, the value that you want to return from that match is this tax rate value. Okay. So that would be C. Uh, in that case, okay, it's a little different. It's not C. They go by numbers. So it's, it's one, two, and three. So, and then I hit enter and then that's, it matches my value. Now, if I hadn't done this dollar locking to that particular cell, you'll see what happens when I copy it over, it will change. So now I got a bunch of, you know, messed up values, right? Because if you see what's happening, that it, it's adapting, right? It says, okay, I, he moved from two to three. So I'm going to change that to three, to six. Because it, it's predicting that, my lookup values, my lookup table is moving down with me as I'm moving these values down. So you want to avoid that. You don't want to do that. If you want to lock it to a particular cell grouping or a cell or a row if you, or a column, um, then you, you put a dollar sign in front of it. So this would lock the, uh, the column, right? If I do this, this would lock the row. But I want both of those locked. So I put dollar in front. 
So now, if I go ahead and copy the functions through, now everything stays. I can go to like row 30 and it still shows A2 to C5. Okay, that's another one of those things that took me a long time to learn. I, I didn't, you know, I used to make all sorts of adjustments to, uh, to make sure my formulas are working uh, when all I had to do was put a dollar sign to, to freeze the, uh, the location of where, am I, where I'm looking up. Okay. That's pretty much what I had. 